What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network, changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku. As well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. Boss Man Show, friend of the show, Coach Travis the Cure with me on the Boss Man Show. Montana Grizzles out of the Big Sky Conference. Coach looking good over there in the background. All them in the background behind Coach, you see him. Hey, Coach, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, doing great. I'm, I'm trying to find a new way to get some more of these. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coach, I must ask you, man, can you believe us? you're going to your 10th season already been here coaching Montana? No, it uh, – they say time flies when you're having fun. I, I just think time flies no matter what. Yeah. Yeah, you got that right, man. And, you know, in this business that, we, that you're in and that I've been a part of for years, 10 years is a long time to stand in one place. You know, talk about the administration and the people at the sports staff who helps you because, you know, his business is fickle. Some guys get two years. Some guys get three at max. You've gotten 10, but you've won as well. But talk about that process as well, Coach. No, it's difficult. Um, I, I think you know, in my years as an assistant coach, right, I was 11 years as a Division One assistant coach um, on the East Coast and the CAA and on the West and the Pac-12. And you see a lot of co- good coaches come and go and, and a number of reasons, right? Obviously, losing does it. But but even the ones that have won and created new expectations for themselves and their programs and then being asked to live up to that standard that they set. And, you know, the game changes, Um the industry changes, college athletics change, you know, probably as much these last three years as, as it had in the 20 years prior. So it's difficult. And and I, I think the most important piece is to surround yourself with good people and people that have common goals and common values as you. Uh, for me here, administration has been great. The community has been great. I played here. Um, so I think I had pretty good feel going into this of, of uh, what it takes um, to, 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 you know, grow support uh, and and get the community behind you, but but also the type of student athletes that you got to bring into a place like this uh, to have success. So it, it's been a group effort, and and I'm very appreciative of the support I've had from the president. Uh, I've had three presidents in my time here, really. Um, 
but 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 also my athletic director and and the other associate ads that helped me you know make make my dreams and aspirations come true. It was great coach about it. You all have you're good in football. You're good in men's basketball. So it all kind of translates to the community getting involved and getting that brand out there because the football team is doing great. You're doing great. Look about how Montana's more of a national brand. There's I was like Montana. Like, people know Montana's about winning, whether it be football or men's basketball. No, you you know we we've got a women's basketball coach that really should be in the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, is is probably more wins than any coach that's not in the Hall of Fame. Um, and, you know, I was here in the early 90s as a player, and, you know, I remember sellout crowds, men and women, volleyball had it rocking. Uh, and and then shortly after I graduated in 94, football wins a national championship, and then the evolution of the athletic department began. Um, and, and so upon my return 20 years later, you're looking at three or four programs that expect to win championships every year, at least compete for them. And, and so it's, it's been special to be a part of. And Coach, I'm asking you, for you with the NIL and portal, has allowed you to get your hands on better high school players or better juco Ju Ju guys where the power five schools are not looking at those guys. They want a certain type of guy. But you're able to get that, that old juco guy with two or three years remaining and those high, high school guys who are getting overlooked because they want more of a dunk, dunk commodity. We got, we got to keep that a secret. Oh, okay, uh, I got you. No, um... I feel that we have action at guys that may or may not be overlooked. I, I think we've got a couple of really good freshmen this year that, in my opinion, um, could easily have been recruited Mountain West, Missouri Valley. Um, and, and some of those schools looked at them, but they decided not to move. And, and when you look at what they took, instead, it was transfers. Um, and, and I, I just think that nationally, everyone's trying to stay older. Um, and, you know, I, I think that it's, it's a lot easier when you have NIL money to recruit out of the portal. Um, but, but, but for me, I honestly believe that if, if you recruit young men that you can't get a peer evaluation of and, and get to know, you can make a lot of mistakes. And, and I think COVID really showed that, um, we really had this thing going um, in, in the right direction. And then with COVID recruiting, some things just didn't fit. Some pieces didn't fit. Um, the culture went the wrong direction. So it took us a couple of years to get it back to where, where we had it. Uh, and I feel we're there now. Um, and, and so for me, yeah, the answer is yes. I, I think we do have an opportunity to pursue high school kids uh, that we may not have or, or or may just not have is a higher level of competition for those kids and it's more like opponents for those kids and and so we'll continue to recruit high school kids we've got four seniors on our team and, and in a perfect world we'll sign four high school kids and then replace transfers with transfers 100 percent. and coach like you said man i feel like getting to know somebody building that relationship with them and their parents, not over a Zoom call or, or a phone call, but having that face-to-face -to -face touch point really helps you. Because even with me, and I've had with interns, it was hard for me doing interns over Zoom for my show. But getting to know these interns personally now, I can pick the right people because people can present themselves on, on a Zoom call a certain way, but in real life, they're really not what they super so call. So I wish you, and I feel like this time, coach, where these guys kind of poach your guys to play for them. You have to kind of re, re, re recruit your guys, but you can bond with them. They like, I hey, love the culture. The market to stay and leave and not take that quick money and get burnt on the back end. But then I buy us on the bench at a power five school. Right. There's a, there's a lot of guys getting paid to watch games. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I, I, I always believe time spent right tells a tale uh about anyone any individual or or a family um the, the thing for us when we've been successful is we recruited guys from our backyard that we had prior relationships with their community right whether that's their AU coaches their high school coaches and maybe sometimes even their parents you know as as we all get older in this game there's more and more student athletes that are raised by you know parents that that are my age um but I think it's important to spend some quality time with people, get them to campus. Because at the end of the day, you, you, you know, a lot of coaches make promises they can't keep. And I, I really don't believe in that. I, I'm a promise to graduate your son if they're here. They put a jersey on as a senior, 100% of them are going to graduate. I can promise that this environment, uh, this atmosphere is going to be incredible. Uh, we'll treat them like family. 
Um, and, and the rest, they kind of have to make happen, right? We, we're going to put our best foot forward and try to develop them and put them in position to be successful. But if they don't put that extra work in and that time in, a lot of the dreams and aspirations they have for themselves won't come true. And the other thing is, is adversity is always going to hit. Every student athlete goes through some sort of adversity. Yes. And so the, the, the biggest, you know, issue is when you don't have relationships with their people, you can't get them through the things that, that are tough for them. You know, between 18 and 22, they, they don't know how to problem solve and it's getting worse with yes. social media and phones and things like that. And so they need our help more than they ever have. And I, I just think we lose sight of that. And Coach DeQ, I think this is also what you said is a little important because I know for me, I'm almost 40 now. And things I was told at Tennessee State from by my coaches, it makes sense to me now as almost a 40 year old. I think because right. at 18 and 22, I was like, man, whatever, whatever. But now I, I, I say I apologize for not listening to you then. But now being an adult, have my own business, trying to make money on my own every day, man. It's like things you said to me really resonates to me now I almost 40 when it didn't when I was 18 20, 20 years old yeah we we hear that a lot man and and it's unfortunate but it's fortunate it's natural right it, it's the same thing with your parents you know I didn't I didn't I didn't think my parents were right about everything that came up especially things that were hard um and so what I saw you know, at, at other places, I thought might be a better situation for me or a better answer in terms of how to progress through adversity. Um, I tell my guys a lot, you know, you, 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 you might just like me right now. You'll love me later when, when you go through some experiences that will help you appreciate what I am doing. And, and that's when you have children and that's when you have real responsibilities and you have to pay bills and you don't just wake up in the morning and have a check in the mail from an athletic department or, you know, a direct deposit from athletic department called scholarship, there's going to be a point in time where you're going to have to go out and, and, and clock in. Uh, at least most of these guys, a few of them would be professional athletes, but even then there's a level of responsibility. Some of these guys get sent home from playing places um, and, and the light comes on and they realize that accountability is real. And it, it's unfortunate that most of them don't learn that until they leave. Um, because the most important thing for them is their dream, right? How much playing time, how many shots they get. It's unfortunate, but that's what we're here for. And coach, I, I really wish I had had a plan while I was playing ball, but I didn't have a plan. I thought I was going to play the NFL. And I got cut three times, right? And just so happened, the radio thing happened for me. But I'll say that if I didn't get my degree in business, like the football, basketball part, that's easy. I, I played it. I know about that back and forth. But the off the air, Handling business, accounting. If I can go get my degree, my degree in business, my MBA, I won't be screwed. <laughs> so I tell any young man, even though I didn't have a plan per se, while I was at in college, the degrees I got helped me right now in what I do every day. Right. It it look when you have a diploma, you've proven that you can finish something that you started. That you you actually can sustain a commitment to something. Um, it's not always easy, and and. For us here, we we try to take another step with that and encourage internships, work experience. I, I think as a student athlete, for me back in the day when there weren't time limitations, um, there wasn't enough time to do that. It was it was the most important thing, and the focus was working on your craft and and you, you know and if you had extra time, it was for study hall to pass your classes. But it was never really work experience in your field and. I think it's important. And and for us, it's worked out that, you know, the, the large percentage of our guys that don't play professional basketball have left here employed. Um, and and I, no, none of them want to talk about that, though, right? Nobody wants to hear that. And so you just got to find ways. You talk about, you know, after you're done playing football, whether it's two years from now or 20 years from now, there's going to be a day. And yes. when that day comes, what's your transition look like? And And you just use that as the carrot and for some of them, they'll realize going in their senior year that they, they, they probably this might be their last season, and and then they have those things in their back pocket. And Coach DeCure, let me ask you this: yes, um, for your young men this summer in their workouts, who are some young men who want to highlight who really grew as players this, this summer, and really somebody you're looking forward to seeing as fall starts here real soon and get ready for this, no, November sixth here. You know, we, we had quite a few guys improve quite a bit. Um, I, I think it was one of our most competitive summers. Um, you know, our freshman class, we we had some young guards come in and 
and really push our, our, our upperclassmen guards. And so it's going to be interesting to see how those minutes play out. Um, I, I, you know, your man by the name of Deshaun Thomas for us, uh, transferred from Colorado state. And, and we kind of put him in a role that he wasn't necessarily comfortable with last year, but that was important for his future. If he wanted to continue to play basketball, I think he embraced it this summer. I think he embraced it on both sides of the ball. And, and so I look forward to him executing it when it's against someone that doesn't wear the same colors as us. Uh, Laulu Oki, a, a, a D2 transfer that, uh, was a phenomenal uh, defender, rebounder at the D2 level. Uh, hit a wall early in, in his transfer last year as a junior. I, I think he's really grown over the summer. Um, but some of that started with the tail end of the season last year with opportunities and things like that. So I, I think our front line got better. Um, we got a young freshman by the name of Money Williams that won a state championship at Oakland. Uh, went to Oakland High School, same, same high school as Damon Lillard. Um, he really hit the ground running. Um, I, I wouldn't say that he was the most improved guy over the summer. I think he was the most impactful guy this summer. Um, and and so those three really jump out. Um, and then the rest of our upper class were pretty steady Eddie, right? Some of them didn't have a lot of room for growth, just you know, going into year four, year five. Um, but but I I think we improved our depth with our transfer recruits. Uh, I think we got a little tougher with our transfer recruits. And and so, you know, we're going to create some expectations for ourselves this year. So, DeCure, as you all prepare for November the 6th, that, uh, how are you going to kind of play? Are you going to do like – I know you have still some talent limitation still, but uh, how, how do you see yourself going about trying to just run up to November the 6th, kind of do good women's win team drills versus still doing skill work for guys and still trying to, you know, get it balanced just right between individual and, skit and team stuff as you get ready to go into November here? You got to make time. You know, I, I think, you know, for us, we're, we're going four days a week. Um, rather than use all of our four hours, we 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 save anywhere for 60 to 90 minutes for for skill work, whether that's individual or groups. We're doing some group work in, in, in our in our team deals as well. But when you have as many new faces as I have, you, you can't ignore the team concepts uh, because that's where you really win games, right, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So just trying to balance it right now. It's about a 50, 50 split in terms of uh, player development and, and, and team um, concepts, terminologies and things like that on both sides of the ball. As we progress and we start our first official practice on the 26th of September, you got more time. Um, and then at that point, it probably becomes about a 70, 30 split with team to, to individual stuff. Um, but you always have extra time to come in in the mornings and in and, and the evenings uh, to get individual work. I, I do think it's important to improve throughout the year and film, film doesn't lie. So once you start playing games, I think that's your best opportunity um, for growth because you can show guys on film what it looks like and, and where their success is and where their failures are. And let's, let's, let's work on those failures and play to the successes. I always, I believe that guys that play to their strengths are win a lot of games. And so that's really the thing we try to push for. And coach, uh, I know your birthday coming up here in November, man. So I uh, hope I hope you get the win before you play your birthday for sure coming up here. And also, coach, I'm asking, man, uh, like when you're not coaching, you, you know, doing doing great job, you know what I mean? Like, how do you decompress? I know, like for me, it's big for me. I'm big on that trying to get away, get away from the radio a little bit and decompress. So, how do you decompress when you're not at at, at the school with these young men coaching them up, man? Family. Um... You know, when when I'm in town with the guys, it's it's sharing my family with them, um, time together as a group, but uh, a lot of time with my household. Um, and and anytime I get breaks, you know, long weekends or you know August vacation time, things like that, I, I go home to Seattle, spend a lot of time with with my, you know the larger piece of my family. But really, it's family. I, I just think that that's the best way to decompress um, because that's really your stability. Now, Coach, are you excited for your Seahawks this year, man? Being from Seattle, are you are you excited for those Seahawks this year, man? I am. I, you know, they 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 worked under the radar last year. I, I think that that's when it's the most fun when nothing's expected of you and you overachieve. Um, now, obviously, there's going to be some expectations for that team a little more this year. But you know, I'm excited to see what they get what they get done. Now, Coach, well, I got one last one for you. Uh, how excited are you all in Seattle at the end base coming back most likely in two or three years? Because I feel like they got so they shot they flick up the Shafonics. So how excited are you all to have the, with the cracking now to see how they have them and the Mariners that have the Sonics pop coming back in two or two or three years, man, to, to boost key arena again. 
Well, Seattle's a, a sports town. Uh, the demand is high for basketball. Um, you know, I, I think people that follow it closely see that with Jamal Crawford's summer league. The summer league's always been good um, in terms of attendance and, and good players, but it's been great since the Sonics left. And, and I think that Jamal did a good job of, of uh, embracing um, the absence of professional basketball and, and turning it into a positive for the community and sharing it with the community, right? Um, but I think that that's a sign of, of of what it would look like when when we get a team back. So I'm excited to see it. I hopefully it's sooner than later. You know, there's always rumors and expectations, and then things don't happen. So my fingers are crossed, but I'm not holding my breath. No, I got I got one more. I got one more. Sorry, I got one more for you, Coach. Now you know we hear a lot of the Hawks. We got Quinn Snyder, Dejounte Murray. So so how how much have you crossed paths with Quinn and and Dejounte? them both being Seattle guys? Not a lot. You know, I, I, I bumped into DeJounte a little bit, um, you know, both from, you know, south end of Seattle. So we know a lot of the same people. Um, you know, he grew up in some of the same areas I grew up. And so I followed him very closely. I actually recruited him to the University of California um, before realizing he really wanted to stay home, which was a, an incredible situation for him to be able to play for Lorenzo Romar. Um Quinn uh, doesn't necessarily return as much. I, I think he's pretty busy in the communities that he's in. We went to the same high school, um, and so we share a lot of the same people um, as well. But cheering for both of them, uh, enjoying the success of anybody from from Washington, especially Seattle. No doubt, Coach. I definitely appreciate you coming on the show today, this morning, the chat with you, Coach. I'm wishing you the best look that you're in the big sky. Hopefully we're talking in March after you get go to commit dance, man. Let's do it. Appreciate you for having me. Hey, it's Coach. Be safe, man. You do the same. All right. Okay. BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Yes, BS3 Network. Changing the way you watch TV. Covering content and hot topics from A to Z. Sports, music, society and culture, movie reviews. You name it, we have it. Check it out on bs3network.com. Or check us out on Roku, BS3 TV on Roku, as well as check out your favorite podcast on all podcast platforms or Spreaker.com backslash BS3 Network. You are now tuned to BS3 Network. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE. B-L-E-A-V for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show. Twitter at Boss Man Show and Facebook Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.